So let's talk a bit about Wi-Fi design and how to design your Wi-Fi network when you're first rolling it out and how Extreme Cloud IQ can help you with making better Wi-Fi design decisions. Uh, the first thing to note is where in the past we focused on coverage-based design whereas we wanted to cover as large an area as possible with as few APs as possible. Uh, we are today talking about design based on capacity. However, coverage is still important. Um, it's important for well, your services to be up and running and it's important also for roaming uh, because you need, to have additional, you need to have sufficient coverage to implement roaming between one AP to another and seamless roaming between multiple APs, multiple floors and so on. The first thing or the first key performance indicator or your Wi-Fi network is, uh, and also the simplest one, RSSI, Received Signal Strength or Received Signal Strength Indicator. And you will see that within Extreme Cloud IQ, when you have your network up and running, there's going to be a lot of measurements that have to do with the RF environment. And those measurements are there to tell you how well is your design working out and it's going to be done based on a floor, building, a campus, um, or zone if that's something that you've implemented. The way you interpret the received signal strength is simply how much RF power is a device receiving from another device. And those two devices normally are a client station and an access point. And when designing for coverage, the normal recommended best practice is to provide at least negative 70 dBm or stronger RSSI um, to be able to support devices on that floor. Now, the, the received signal of negative 70 dBm is considered to be a good quality uh, of signal. How do, you do, how do you measure it? Well, usually you have to do a site survey. And the thing about a site survey is the RSSI is going to differ between different types of devices. So when you're doing your first Wi-Fi uh, survey, when you're doing your first site survey, make sure you know what kind of devices will be used on that network. And when you're doing a site survey, it's a good idea to take the least capable device, the device that performs the worst in terms of received signal strength, and use that as your baseline. Don't use the device with the best radio, with external antennas, which will perform much better than any you know, other devices. For example, a smartphone has a zero dBi antenna in there, so there's no gain. Um, and if you do a measurement with a very capable Wi-Fi site survey tools, they will get much better RSSI compared to that smartphone. And if you base your design on that professional site survey tool, uh, and deploy your network that way, it may not cater to that smartphone and its zero dBi antenna. So make sure you know what kind of devices you'll be deploying in the network and if you're using the RSSI as the measurement of how good your network is in terms of deployment, how good your, device, how good your design is, make sure that you use appropriate devices. Now, we'll look at some of the reasons why RSSI probably isn't the best KPI of, of your design isn't the best parameter to use when or the only parameter to use when you're designing but it's usually going to be the first one because it's the lowest hanging fruit when you're designing networks. Now when you have your device you have your design up and running when you have your network up and running Extreme Cloud IQ will provide you with a lot of different resources to be able to determine how well your Wi-Fi is performing. Uh, you usually see it in forms of uh, this Gaussian or normal distribution graphs uh, that you can see on the slide uh, and it will give you a very good measurement of how your device is performing against other devices on the floor. So you can interpret that in a way where if you take, if we did our design using our laptop with an external antenna for example and we used a site survey tool uh, to measure RSSI and then you connect your client device, which is a one by one smartphone with a zero dBi antenna. The green line, it's probably going to be on the left hand side of the mean. So when you look at that dark portion of the graph, 
it's going to be on the left hand side and it will actually lie outside of the standard deviation probably. And if it's outside of the standard deviation, that means that device is not having a good experience in terms of Wi-Fi. And the reason is, well, it's not getting enough signal. Uh, so these are the kind of things that we can do using the power of machine learning uh, and the amount of data that we get from the Wi-Fi network. And this is all there to make it easier for you to implement better the design decisions. But again, the domain knowledge of designing a network lies within the uh, expertise of the network architect. Probably one of the most important things to remember when you're doing Wi-Fi designs is not all devices are created equal. So we already saw in terms of signal strength, different devices will see the RF environment differently. Uh, and the Extreme Cloud IQ is here to help you to assess how different client devices are actually seeing the network, which is one of the most difficult things to see uh, when you're deploying and managing a Wi-Fi uh, network. So we, look, we talked about RSSI. Let's talk about receive sensitivity. So the different devices will be able to run different data rates with different RSSI. Uh, the Usually the stronger the signal, the better, the better the data rate, the more data you can push through that communication channel. But different devices will have different thresholds to switch between those data rates depending on what the, the RSSI is. Usually every manufacturer will give you a table of um, what kind of data rate converts to a minimum received sensitivity or a minimum RSSI. And depending on chipset vendor, the device vendor, uh, different devices will have different thresholds. It's important to know that when you're designing, not only do you take care about minimum RSSI. So we said previously, a coverage-based design needs at least negative, seven, negative 70 dBm. However, this becomes more complicated if your device that you're using cannot have the maximum data that you want at those negative 70 dBm, then you have to change your threshold. Um, if, for example, if you're using any sort of real-time video types of application, you will want at least 24 megabits per second sustained data rate. That's going to be your threshold for what kind of RSSI minimum you need. And this is the difference between coverage-based and capacity or uh, usage-based design. So we're talking about how much data rate do we need, not how much coverage we need. We mentioned that the RSSI probably isn't the best indicator of how well your network is performing or more importantly, what kind of client experience your devices and your users have. Uh, a better indicator is something called signal to noise ratio or simply SNR. And to best explain the signal to noise ratio, Think about a room full of people. In that room, people are having conversations. So you have a conversation with your colleague, and the amount of other voices in the room that don't, ha that don't have anything to do with the conversation between you and your colleague, that's called noise. And the louder those other people are talking, the more noise there is, and the harder it is for you to hear your colleague and for your colleague to hear you. And this is called signal-to-noise ratio. It's the same or a similar principle applies in a Wi-Fi scenario. When two stations talk to one another, the quality of that communication, or more importantly, the data rate of that communication will depend on how loudly other devices around them are talking. And like I said, everything that doesn't apply to the communication between these two stations is considered to be noise. So whether that's Wi-Fi noise, non-Wi-Fi noise, other, other types of uh, transmissions within that same frequency space, it's all considered to be noise. And the SNR is a more accurate representation of what kind of quality of communication you're going to have between two Wi-Fi stations. Radios will use modulation encoding schemes, or simply MCSs, um, that will determine the data rate between the access point and the client device. The better the SNR, the more complex the modulation encoding scheme, the higher the data rate. The lower the SNR, the simpler the modulation encoding scheme, 
and lower the data rate. So you want to produce a sustained SNR uh, throughout your environment for your network to work. And what's considered to be a minimal SNR is going to be 20 dB. Usually it's going to be 25 dB or better. So signal to noise ratio should be at least 20 or 25 decibel or better. If you want to use those high data rates supplied by 802.11 AC and AX, we're actually talking about over 30 dB of signal to noise ratio. Uh, again, this is why it's important to know what you're designing your network for, what kind of applications and what kind of clients are going to be used on that network, and that will determine what kind of SNR you need. And we're, we're talking about a sustained SNR. How can Extreme Cloud IQ help here? Well, within the platform you will see, similar to the RSSI graph, you will see an SNR graph. And it's interpreted in a, ver in a very similar way. So it's going to take all the measurements across the floor or a building, and it will say, oh, this particular device has a sustained SNR of 26 decibels, and compared to other devices on this floor, that's actually within the uh, limits of standard deviation. If you go further to the left of that standard deviation, it's probably not a good thing. Um, whereas if you stay within those limits and you know those limits are like 30 dB, which is a good SNR, then from a Wi-Fi perspective, your client device is probably having a good experience. So we'll be moving away from coverage design to more usage-based or capacity-based designs. Uh, let's first look at what kind of SNR do we need if we want to implement, say, voice over IP? For most applications, uh, if you're not you know, deploying um, a warehouse or if you're not deploying a very basic guest network, SNR is probably the most important RF metric. And the sustained SNR of 25 dB or better is probably what you'll want for any sort of real-time traffic. If you are catering only for non-real-time traffic, web browsing, um, more coverage-oriented design, then you want at least 20 dB of SNR. Now, one thing to remember when you're talking about these numbers, uh, when you're talking about decibel to milliwatt, this is a logarithmic scale. So, for every three decibels of loss, we're talking about half of power. Or for every three decibels of gain, we're talking about twice the power. So if you see a change between 23 to 20 decibels in terms of SNR, we're talking about half the power. Or the other way, when you go from 20 to 23, we're talking about twice the power. So it doesn't look like much when you're looking at it in your RF tools on Extreme Cloud IQ. You say, oh, it's only 10%. Well, it's a logarithmic scale. It's 50%. Or it's 100% if you go from 20 to 23, or 50% when you go from 23 to 20. So remember, decibels are logarithmic, and small changes can actually mean a lot of, can mean big differences.